So a quick little introduction. Um, I'm Paul Dysinger, and this is my wife, Natasha. And we love growing food. We love growing food. And super excited to be here with all of you today and to be talking about microgreens, which, um, fancy this, is one of our favorite things to grow, actually. <laughs> we just love microgreens. They are so fun. They are so exciting to grow. And we've been doing it for a little while now. And a quick little background to us. I um, lived for many years with my family on Bountiful Blessings Farm. Uh, my dad, Edwin, and Uncle John, uh, you all uh, heard Uncle John last night, and they partnered together for many years on the farm, and I worked with the family business for many years, and then branched off and started teaching people how to grow their own food just more on a home scale. And then from that, um, I recognized that a lot of people don't have a lot of space, and that's kind of how I jumped into growing microgreens, because they're something that you can grow uh, literally anywhere. Before we d get started, do you mind if we just have a quick word of prayer? Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for this opportunity to come together and to talk about growing food, and specifically about growing microgreens. And we just invite your presence to be with us as we talk and share now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, so growing microgreens is kind of the rage. Um, they're, it's kind of the in thing to do in many ways. Uh, they're really super easy to grow. I mean, imagine this. Imagine it's so easy that literally your six-year-old can do it. Uh, you can teach your six-year-old how to grow microgreens. Um, it's that easy. It only takes a few minutes a day. You can start for only $20 or less. So it's a very low-cost barrier of entry to get started and get going. You can eat your first harvest in 14 days. That's like instant gardening. I mean, there's no faster way to get a harvest and eat the work of your hands than growing microgreens. Um, you're growing food with up to 40 times. Yeah. Okay, is this better? All right, that will help my voice too, so I'm not yelling the whole time. <laughs> All right, you can, uh, with microgreens, you're growing food with up to 40 times the nutrients of regular veggies. In fact, red cabbage was the one that they found had the most nutrients. It had 40 times the nutrients of an adult cabbage in the red cabbage. Uh, those nutrients include nutrients that are ex extremely important for your skin, your eyes, and for fighting cancer. So you're really getting a strong nutrient boost with growing microgreens. Um, you don't have to deal with weeds when you're growing microgreens, so that's a huge plus. And you can grow them all year round. Oh, look, we got it up on the projector. Wonderful. Thank you so much for whoever did that. Yeah, give them a round of applause. Um, yeah, I wonder if we could raise it up. Here, I'll let someone else figure that out while I keep talking here. Um, so you can grow them all year round, literally anywhere. And when I mean literally anywhere, uh, obviously, if you're in the winter in Montana, you might not be able to grow them outside, but you can grow them inside. So you can grow them down in your basement um, with a little supplemental lighting. You can grow them literally anywhere. We like to grow them um, outside, too, when we can because uh, we like them just to get the natural sunlight, but we'll talk about lighting as well. In fact, uh, researchers that were studying microgreens said, this is their literal quotes, that it totally knocked me over, was quite astonishing, and when we first got the results, we had to rush to double and triple check them. Just because of the nutrient differences that they were finding in the microgreens versus the regular, it just totally shocked um, the researchers. So here are just a few of that a few slides of that research. This is from WebMD talking about how microgreens have up to 40 times more vital nutrients than mature plants. Um, the USDA uh, talks about specialty greens packed with a nutritional punch, and NPR had a whole segment on them. And so microgreens have really been um, making their way in the news, and they're a real specialty item. Like if you go and buy microgreens at the store, they can be really expensive, which is why uh, some people... Uh, are really excited about doing it as a business. And Lucia Tiffany in, is here, and she's been doing microgreens as a business. Um, so if any of you are interested in doing them as a business, um, you know, in this class, we're going to be specifically talking about just some of the nuts and bolts of growing them, period. 
But if you're interested in taking it to the next level and doing it as a business, I would really encourage you, and maybe Lucia, you can just wave your hand to talk to Lucia Tiffany because she can give you the ins and outs of doing it as a business. Paradiseacres.farm. Paradiseacres.farm is, is their website, so you can go there. Um, but there are so, so they're expensive to buy in the store, but they are so cheap to grow. And uh, I, I literally did like a little cost comparison because I was, I, I was interested in, you know, they, they're super easy to grow, but they're not that he- heavy. Like, you know, once you harvest them, um, it's not like harvesting a big bunch of kale, right? Um, so I did a little cost comparison. I, I, I thought, like, wait for weight. Am I still saving money growing microgreens versus buying an adult head of kale? I know the microgreens are more nutrient dense. They're packed with more nutrients. So I'm getting more nutrients out of them. But... Uh, am I saving money like weight for weight? And uh, when, when I cost it out of how much it costs me to grow, um, I used like kale microgreens as an example versus buying an adult bunch of kale in the store. It was still costing me half the price of buying the adult bunch of kale in the store to grow my own microgreens pound for pound, plus you're getting that extra neutral nutrient punch. So the, they are, um, they're just... Super greens. They're great. Um, So here's an overview of what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about, first of all, gathering your materials. Like, what's it going to take to actually do this yourself? Uh, Starting your seeds, seed starting. Caring for your microgreens. Fertilizing them, like a fertilizer mix, or how how we go about fertilizing them. Um, Lighting for your microgreens, if you end up with supplemental lighting. Uh, Harvesting them. And then, as a bonus... Um, you got to stay for this because this is a game changer. We're going to be sharing with you an autopilot tray system that I invented to literally put your microgreens on autopilot. So you can seed them and come back 10 to 14 days later and harvest them, and you don't have to do anything in between. You don't have to worry about watering them, fertilizing them, anything in between. It really is a huge game changer and is a lifesaver for us mm-hmm living on a busy schedule that we do. And I know many of you have busy schedules as well. So let's jump in, starting out with gathering your materials, um, what you need. And, hun, do you want to grab, yeah, let's grab some of the, um, maybe just grab the kit there, and we can show you all um, what you need. So the first thing that you need is, uh, is some type of tray to grow them in. And um, so my wife, Natasha, here has these little trays. And we kind of personally like growing in these 10 by 10 trays. So let me just grab one here. It's, it's a little bit um, smaller. We have some examples up here. And I've got to give a thank you to Tommy Mayer, who started some microgreens for us to show you as an example. Because Natasha and I flew in today, and so we couldn't bring the microgreens on the airplane. We wanted to grow some. Um, So he came, and we have some examples here for you. And you can get larger, like, 10 by 20 trays that you can grow them in as well. So this is also a good way uh, to grow microgreens. These aren't full size. They are just started. Um, I would say they're, I don't know, five to seven days old, uh, about like this. They'll grow a bit taller than that, you'll see in the in the pictures here too. Oh, just to, I'm sure, are in sprouts, are they? Are they yeah. Sprouts? Okay, so let me tell you the difference between microgreens and sprouts because that's one of the biggest questions, right? So the difference is the stage of growth of the plant. So sprouts, you start, um, and actually with sprouts, you don't grow them in anything uh, except just like a little sprouting kit. You literally just put water on them and then you rinse them, you know, a couple day, times a day, etc. You wait for them to sprout. And they never grow really any bigger than that. Um, if this, the you know, sprouts are like what five days um, of your plant, kind of just in, in general. So you are just and literally a sprout has only the nutrients that are found in the seed. That's that's all the their nutrients that they're getting because they're literally just sprouting with water. And they are very, they're nutritional and they're good for you, but it's just the stage of growth. So a microgreen is the next stage of growth up from a sprout. You're growing it to 10 to 14 days and you're getting the first true leaves that come out from the plant. 
and that also means that it's growing to a stage where it's beginning to take up nutrients. That's why we're going to talk about fertilizing in a little bit. It's beginning to take up nutrients as well. So you'll get micronutrients in there, and that's part of how it gives it such a big, huge nutritional punch. It's the most nutrient-dense stage of the plant, as far as I know. All right, so the first thing that you need is tra uh, trays to grow in. Yeah. When it comes to the trays, you can see the ones that are in the demonstrations here that Tommy did for us. Um, they're much shallower trays. And if you're not going to be doing like a self-watering system, that's really nice because yeah. it makes it much more easy to harvest when you're cutting them. Can I see the difference? Um, and when you are, just when you're growing, it allows for more air to pass through because they're, you know, they're farther above the, the tray level. Now, we like to do the self-watering system, so we use these deeper trays because that allows there to be a little reservoir of water underneath, right? And we'll show you that more as we get to that point, how we actually do that. But that's why we like these deep trays, because it allows there to be a reservoir of water underneath. And then the microgreens are growing closer to the, to the edge of the tray, and so they're still getting above the tray like these ones do, mm -hmm. um, because we're starting it with that self-watering system. Yep. And um, one thing that I have done with these, if I'm not doing it with a self-watering, I couldn't find any store that sold the 10 by 10s on a, with, as a shallower tray. If anybody finds one, I would love to hear about it because it would be great to buy them just as a shallower tray. I couldn't find a store, but you can just come and take a knife and cut that shorter if you want to, and I've done that uh, to grow it in a, in a smaller tray. One reason why we like the smaller trays is that this is kind of a perfect size to harvest for Natasha and I. I mean, we can harvest a single tray and eat it in our salad, or sometimes they get pretty we thick. We just, a whole tray. yeah, we don't even necessarily eat a tray. whole tray. Um, but we could, like, you know, harvest half a tray one day, half a tray the next day, and it's just a nicer size for a small, um, you know, just being a, a couple, we don't eat as much. All right, so the second thing that you need is a growing medium to grow in. And um, what we have been using is coconut core. And literally, we just grow our microgreens in coconut core by itself. Um, Lucia Tiffany mixed her coconut core with rice hulls and fertilizer. Mm -hmm. And we'll be talking about the fertilizer in a little bit. Um, so you can make a little mixture like with the coconut core and the rice hulls. Or like I said, we have just been growing in the coconut core by itself. Yes, good question, and um, we will talk about that in just a little bit, about what you, what you can do with the coconut core. All right, so you need the gro growing medium, then of course you need the seeds to grow the plants themselves, um, and there are many different types of microgreens that you can grow. Now, you don't just want to grow anything. Uh, I wouldn't suggest growing tomato microgreens, um, but the many... If you think of pretty much any of your greens, uh, kale, collards, um, cabbage, broccoli. cabbage, broccoli, lettuce you can grow, um, sunflowers uh, are some of these up here are sunflowers, and they make great microgreens as well. Um, peas, peas are one of my favorites. Uh, they grow really tall and they, they're like a sweet taste to them. It's kind of like a sugar snap pea um, sprout. Uh, so there's many different things that you can grow. The next thing that you need is uh, fertilizer, because like I said, they're beginning to take up nutrients. And then you also need light, and that can be natural sunlight, or it can be an artificial uh, light that you're growing them with. So there's a couple different options. You can go out and purchase the materials on your own, and we have some resources that we can share with you of like a link where we list kind of like our favorite places to go and buy some of these materials. Um, or you can get a microgreens growing kit to start. And there's many places you can get, get a kit. Um, but we, uh, since we were doing the class on microgreens, and last, last year we brought microgreens kits to the ag conference and they were a huge hit. So we brought more kits this year. So if anyone is interested in just a ready-to-go microgreens kit that you can just get started and go. We have them available here. Um, I should just mention that we have a limited quantity, so it's first come, first serve on um, the microgreens kits. What the, the kit includes two trays, one coconut core brick, and this brick is a compressed brick of coconut core. You put it in water, and it expands, 
And I would say that it would grow probably about eight of the trays. Um, so it, it really can expand a good little amount. Uh, the kit comes with two seed packets. We give you the red cabbage, because uh, that's the most nutrient-dense one, and then also a kale, a packet of kale. Uh, it comes with a bonus little fertilizer bottle that we'll talk about in an instruction sheet. So there's kind of, the, the kit is a great way to get started uh, for yourself, and then we give you resources of where you can purchase more materials as well. So let's talk about seed starting. Seed starting. Um, this is kind of the first um, first part of growing your microgreens, and that is with your seeds. There's an optional stage here where you can soak your seeds before uh, seeding them. Uh, optional for, for many of the different microgreens. Um, and if you're going to do that, you would cover your seeds with water. You'd let them soak overnight for about six to eight hours. Um, at least. And uh, sunflower, buckwheat, beet, and pea seeds do best soaked um, ahead of time. Um, beet seeds, um, just make a mental note, they don't need to be soaked for eight hours. You can just soak them for a couple hours. Um, but the sunflower, the buckwheat, and the pea, uh, you could you would soak them overnight. And what, what soaking your seeds does is it gives them just a little head start on the sprouting process. Um, so it uh, gives them a little head start. Most of, the, most of the microgreens that we do, I'll just be honest with you, like I said, this is optional for most of them. And most of the ones that we do, we don't soak our seeds. We just uh, seed them and keep them moist. And we'll tell you a little bit about um, exactly how we do that in just a second here. Um, I find it just a little bit, personally, a little bit easier than going through the soaking process. And we've still found that we've had really great germination and haven't had a problem with growing them without soaking the seeds ahead of time. Um, but with some of the larger seeds, the sunflower, buckwheat, and pea, um, they say that it is better to soak them ahead of time. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, so you don't need to soak all of your seeds. Um, it helps uh, for possible faster germination. I'll tell you the reason why I like not soaking my seeds ahead of time is when I do soak my seeds and then I try and spread them on my uh, coconut core, they stick to my fingers and it's really hard to get a nice spread. It, yeah, it's kind of like um, my friend Tommy was saying when he, he did these, he soaked these ahead of time and he hadn't done that before and he said it was like putting his fingers in those little uh, styrofoam balls, you know, where they just <laughs> stick to your fingers. <laughs> And so it makes it really hard to spread them. Um, if you do soak them ahead of time, you might want to just kind of da damply kind of dry the seeds a little bit in a paper towel or something before spreading them um, is what I would encourage. All right, so the second step is to soak and spread your coconut core. And why don't we grab the coconut yeah, core? Yeah. Sure. And so we've got a little example here for you of one of our bricks, coconut core bricks that uh, we just soaked in a little bit of water, and so you can we see... Partially soaked it. Yes. So it wouldn't fully expand. You want to tell them a little bit about it? Sure. So what I did when Paul was telling me, he's like, oh, I'd like to just show them, you know, actually live. So I didn't fill the whole thing with water because it just keeps expanding and expanding. It's kind of you overwhelming to deal with. So I just put a little water on the bottom, and you can see how it just traveled up so that we can just flake off as much as we want. Now, with the coconut core, you know, it's... It's not going to go bad. Nothing's going to happen what happens. to it. So <laughs> when we do our coconut core, I just soak a block at a time. Or sometimes we order larger blocks of, of the cocoa peat. And then I just soak it and then put it in a bucket. And then when I'm ready for the next batch, I just grab more out of there until I've used that up. And then I soak the next batch. Um, and it's okay. You know, if you, like, put it in a bucket without a lid, it'll dry out. And it'll end up just being, like, dry peat moss essentially so you can let it dry out if you want otherwise you can just keep it moist and then we spread it on the tray and we do it uh maybe quarter inch this is thicker than, yeah, than that but, thick. um, we do it maybe a quarter inch thick it really does not need a lot of the coconut core to to grow in yes yeah I will yeah. try and show you it's here. It's going to be hard to see what he's doing just because of the walls of the, well, the thing anyway. Well, I got the computer up if you can. Sure. So you should be able to find it. 
Is this helpful? Okay, perfect. Okay, so um, you want to do it about a quarter to a half inch deep. Um, you'll save a little bit of coconut core if you do it a quarter inch deep, obviously. And you want it a little bit wetter than I have right here. You want it to be a bit moist like a ringed out sponge is what you want with your coconut core. And let me just... So then you gently pat it down and spread your seeds on the surface of the coconut core. For small seeds, like the cabbage and the kale that are, are in the kit, and like if you're doing lettuce or many, many of the seeds that you will do when it comes to greens are going to be small seeds, um, those you want to spread about 10 to 12 seeds per square inch. So you do it pretty thick. Um, on there. If you if you seed it too thick, you risk having um, you risk having disease problems uh, because the plants are growing too close together, and you can end up with mold and fungus issues. Uh, if you do it too thin, it's not really a problem, but you get less of a harvest off of your thing. So you kind of want to get that balance in between. And uh, so we spread about ten to twelve seeds per square inch, and um, I can spread some on here and we can pass this around so you can just kind of see a little visual that might help you to kind of get it visually in your mind what that looks like um, in the tray itself. And I would say my tendency is... Okay, so once you have spread your seeds on the coconut core, um, you can see kind of the seeds on the right-hand side there. Then for most of your <coughs> seeds of the microgreens, you're not going to actually cover the seeds with soil or coconut core. You're just going to leave them spread on top of the coconut core. Now, with some of your larger seeds, like peas and sunflowers, then you will cover them with a little bit of soil uh, for the sprouting process. Uh, sunflowers and peas are a little exception there, so those larger seeds. Then you want to you want to moisten your seeds down. So spray them with a little spray bottle on top. You know your coconut core is already moist, but spray them down on top. Moisten them down. Set them aside in a warm place to sprout and cover the tray. We just cover our tray with a plastic bag to keep the humidity up. You can uh, purchase some. They sell like these little plastic um, domes for trays, or sometimes people will take an extra tray and turn it upside down and put it on your tray. Anything just to keep the humidity up in, for those seeds, uh, just during the sprouting process. It'll take a day or two for your seeds to sprout, and then once that has happened, you can uh, take take that off. So just keep them covered until they are germinated. The next, question. yes, question. Okay, the question is how warm? Most seeds germinate best at around 70 degrees um, Fahrenheit. Now, the, it is kind of a give and take. They, they will germinate like at 50 degrees. Uh, if you're going lower than 50 degrees, some seeds will have a hard time uh, germinating. But try and get it up to around 70 degrees is the ideal. Um, you can even get little heat mats. We don't do it. We just let them germinate in our home, and that works well. And most people's homes are around the 70 degree. It might be 65 and that will still work for you. So, no, sunlight no sunlight is needed for the germination process. Yeah, you can just cover them and, and good questions. All right, so then the next step is caring for your microgreens as they are growing. And um, once they have germinated, remove the plastic cover Keep your soil moist, and the way that you can do that, there's a couple different ways. You can mist it with a water bottle. Um, we'll talk about watering. Well, yeah, we'll talk about watering now. So you can, there's a couple different ways that you can water your microgreens. You can get like a spray bottle, and you can water them with the spray bottle. Now, as they are growing, you do want to try and keep them as dry as possible, because the, you do when you're growing that many plants close together. You do risk disease pressure with fungus and mold, and that especially accentuates when there is moisture there. So when I was watering my microgreens with a spray bottle, I would put the little spray nozzle down into the greens, so it'd get underneath the leaves, and try and spray the coconut core underneath. Do you do you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, and that would help with keeping the moisture down uh, on the greens. The other thing is they're growing so close together that if you spray the top, all you're spraying is the leaves, and it's not going to really get down to the coconut core as much. So that's something to keep in mind. The other way that you can do it is if you are growing with a tray that has holes in the bottom. Do you mind just grabbing that one there, hon? Um, 
You can get trays with holes or you can get trays without holes. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. But if you're growing with a tray that has holes in the bottom, you can bottom water your microgreens by dipping the whole tray in a little bit of water and just letting it soak for a second, for a few seconds. You know, just wait till the coconut core can absorb the water and then lift the tray out. And that's an excellent way to do it. Um, that can save you with disease pressure as well. Then you want to place them in a place with bright light. Uh, a window with good sunlight can work with microgreens, uh, or you can use a grow light, or you can grow them outside. If you're growing them outside, you will want to bring them inside if it rains, because um, it can just kind of, <laughs> um, yeah, mash your microgreens down and break them up and stuff. We ha we've, yeah. Yeah, microgreens, um, partial to full sun. So you can you can grow them in a window where they get you know only four hours of direct sunlight. But the more sunlight, uh, the better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what we typically do is when we seed our microgreens, we cover them with a plastic bag and we put them by the door that is leading out of our apartment up to ground level because we're in a basement. And that door is south facing, so it's a, it's a you know it's a glass door, so it does get good light coming through there. But if we leave our microgreens there beyond, because it is you know kind of down, it gets bright light, but it doesn't necessarily get sunlight. And so the the microgreens, if we leave them there throughout their growing process, can end up being really leggy, where they are they're looking for light, so they just shoot up as fast as they can, and they end up with real long stems and real tiny leaves. So the nice thing, what we do is we leave them in there until they've germinated kind of gotten themselves established, and then we just take them out and we put them on the steps. They get a lot of sunlight out there, and they just end up growing really thick and beautiful, plenty of leaves as compared to stems, um, and it works really well. And especially since they're self-watering, we don't have to worry about them drying out or anything out there, um, and they end up being really beautiful. Yeah, yeah. All right, so the second... So you want to make sure that they have good light there. And we'll talk a little bit more about lighting in a second um, if you end up growing inside with lights. Um, the next thing here is you want to make sure not to let your soil dry out. Yes, we got one more question. How often do you water them? How often do you water them? You want to water them um, at least once a day, uh, sometimes twice a day, depending on how quickly your coconut core is drying out. And that can be multiple factors to it. It can be how dry your air is, you know, if there's ventilation coming by, it can dry out slower or faster. So you just want to keep an eye on it, see how you don't want it to dry completely out. So Usually, you'd water them uh, about once a day, um, maybe twice a day if needed. Mm -hmm. Yes, one more question. Yeah, you know, we, um, we like to use filtered water so that it doesn't have all of the chlorine and everything in it. Specifically in our situation now, when we're on the farm, we just use water from the spring. Um, but depending on the situation, if you're living in a place where you have city water, we'd like to filter those chemicals out to water our microgreens. We haven't specifically gone into checking the pH levels, and I would turn that over to Lucia if she has any thoughts specifically on like pH levels of water and stuff like that. I know some people say it's a crucial thing. Um, we've never had a problem with the water that we've used. Yeah, we've never had a problem with pH either. Yeah. There's some that like a little more acidic water, like the beets and the chard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But if you have chlorinated water source, you've got to get rid of the chlorine. Yeah. Like yeah. So you can let it sit out in an open container overnight. I think that most mm -hmm. of the chlorine will evaporate. Yeah. If you need something, filter it or yeah. It. Yeah. So I'll just repeat that both for the recording and if anyone else didn't hear, um, they haven't had it. She hasn't had a problem with the water either. There are some microgreens that are like a little bit more acidic water, but um, use what you have. And if you do have chlorinated water, it is important to get that out of the water. Yes? So I don't know if you're covering this question later, but what's the... I know coconut core costs money. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's not easily attainable for most of us except buying it online. Mm -hmm. What's the advantages to using coconut core versus pot potting soil or something like that? Why would yes, so you can use like a peat moss... Um, or a potting soil mix, and that is an alternative. Um, and 
I have used like the potting soil mix for growing peas and it works you know very well I haven't used it specifically for the other microgreens so I can't give you like a personal experience answer on that but I would say that it would probably work um, good for the mi regular microgreens as well It could be. Just look it on it and see if it's 100% coconut core. Hydroponic growers use it a lot. To yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And and it is pretty readily available and inexpensive online. And if you're having trouble finding like a place that is inexpensive to get it, then uh, we can give you some resources to get it very inexpensively online. Yes. Yeah, yeah. so we'll go ahead and touch on that right now. Um, we only use our coconut core once. Um, there's a couple reasons for that. Number one, by the time you harvest, it's going to be full of roots. Um, and so it's not really good to grow in a second time. Um, so we take it off and we put it on our compost pile. And then it will either end up in the garden, you know, later on, or... Uh, if it, you composted it by itself, then you possibly could come back and use it again. I don't know. I've never done that. Um, but we just use a new one mm -hmm, each time. And you can recycle it into your garden. It's very natural. It's compostable. And coconut is an extremely renewable resource. Yeah. So th then, you know, the, alt the alternate is instead of watering your microgreens every single day which takes up the bulk of the work of growing microgreens you can just set it up on the autopilot system that we'll show you in just a minute here which our time is running out so let's run quickly through here because I really want to show you how to set it up on autopilot for yourselves let's talk real quick about what about disease um, mold and fungus problems is going to be your main problems with disease you can see in the picture there um, sometimes your microgreens will be growing and they'll just suddenly have a spot that just kind of sinks in and they kind of all wilt and you end up with a disease problem number one you want to make sure that your trays are clean when you start out because uh, that can make a difference um, if you are having problems with mold or fungus, you want to increase your air circulation. Make sure that they have um, good air circulation. Mm -hmm. Which tray you haven't made it this time? Okay. Do you mind uh, taking the tray and just uh, passing it around? And it looks like some of the seeds have kind of migrated to the center as people have been handling it. But you'll still get an idea of what it's like. So you want to make sure you have good air circulation. It can be helpful uh, to... If you have real bad problems with uh, disease, you can put like a little fan where you're growing them just to have good circulation for your microgreens. The other problem is that sometimes it's caused by seeding your microgreens too thickly, and so try seeding them a little less thickly, and that can be very helpful. Now, this isn't something that I've personally tried, but that I've heard. Um, from microgreens growers is that grapefruit seed extract mixed with water can help with like just a natural solution against the fungus and the mold. So that's something that you could keep in mind and give a try, give it a try. Like I said, I haven't personally used it. And the way that we've grown our microgreens, we haven't had a huge problem with the fungus and mold. So I would start out with keeping your trays clean, making sure they've got good ventilation and seeding less densely if you end up getting um, big problems with the disease issues. All right, the next section here is your fertilizer mix. And um, here is what we have traditionally used here is a BioThrive vegan plant food um, that it's, it's not certified organic, but I called the company and they, they source um, organic natural uh, resources for it. It's a liquid fertilizer and you mix one teaspoon of the fertilizer with a quart of water and you can water your microgreens with it that way and it works well. Um, I, I personally want to switch to using more of like a, a powder base, like a rock powder um, and more natural fertilizer that's not liquid based. Um, and I'm going to start trying, I haven't tried it yet, but I'm going to start trying using the vegan mix. Some of you have seen me uh, advertising that. I have no affiliation with the company. I just know it works good. And um, 
I'm going to start trying to use that with my microgreens as well. It's called. It's from the company Down to Earth Vegan Mix. If you can't see it up there, and that you would just mix into the coconut core, and then you don't have to worry about any fertilizer with the watering process. Um, Lucia Tiffany uses a 711. Are you still using that? I am, but I'm uh -huh. quite likely to be switching to this. To this one. Yeah, okay. Quiet. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. How much of that would you possibly put into the little square that's right? Yeah. So you know, I haven't done it yet. So <laughs> I don't know. I I would have to experiment a little bit with it to yeah, come up yeah, with a true. with a for sure amount. Um, but I would say I would pro like for one of the trays. I would probably maybe put like a tablespoon or um, maybe maybe not quite a tablespoon, maybe a, a teaspoon or a couple of teaspoons of it for, for one of the trays. Not quite a tablespoon. A tablespoon would be a bit much. Yes? Uh, organic, not organic, but is it considered organic? Or? It is considered organic, yes. Both of these are considered, well, like I said, the BioThrive is not certified organic, so if you're growing as a certified organic business, you can't use the BioThrive. But I personally called the company and questioned them on, on their resources because they do say that they are, um, it's from General Organics, which, you know, they're kind of promoting themselves as a natural uh, alternative to synthetic fertilizers. And so I questioned them on it, and um, I'm satisfied that they are a good company to purchase from. Yeah, yeah. Yes, and then we'll come back here. Compost tea. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've never tried it myself. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah, thank you for sharing that. So if anyone wants to try Moringa tea, that can be helpful, possibly. Mm -hmm. Vegan Mix, um, I believe, is OMRI certified, but I will have to double check on that. I will have to double check on that. One more question, and then we got, yeah, we need to move on because our time is. I didn't hear you say how often you do it and how much. Yes. Okay, so with the BioThrive, we just put it in the water that we use to water the plants. So every time they get watered, they get um, the nutrients from the water. The vegan mix, you would just mix in with the coconut core, and you don't have to worry about it because it will just be sitting there um, the whole time. All right. And when we do did it with our autopilot tray system, um, we mixed the fertilizer in with the water, and then the water watered the plants um, from that, so we didn't have to worry about it. All right, let's touch on lighting real quickly here. Um, you can grow in partial to full sunlight. Uh, so if you have a, a windowsill that gets good sunlight, like we talked about earlier, uh, you can do them on a windowsill, and I'll show an example of that in just a minute. Or you can use a grow light, like it is on the picture here. This is one of our gardening members in our online gardening membership where we have a little step-by-step -step, um, training on how to grow microgreens in the membership. And so you, I've got members that are growing microgreens, and this is Christina. She was growing microgreens, and she just posted that up just a few days ago, actually, and was showing how she's growing microgreens in the middle of winter in her house using a lighted system like this. It's very inexpensive to grow with a lighted system if you use um, fluorescent bulbs like just regular fluorescent light bulbs from Lowe's or Home Depot. You can get them like this. Um, she may be using a grow light there, just I'm saying judging on the distance between the light and the plants. Um, fluorescent bulbs, you'll want to keep them within a couple inches of your plants as they're growing. Mm -hmm. LEDs work as well. Yes, yes, you can get LEDs. Um, is, are LEDs, I haven't used LEDs myself, I've just used fluorescents. Do you keep them the same distance as the, or is that as? Yeah, okay. um, we switched almost completely over to LEDs. Yeah. But you have to make sure they're close enough to the plant so that you're not getting the leggy. Yeah, okay, so you want to keep them close to the plant with the LEDs as well. All right, then what about harvesting? That is the probably one of the most fun parts of um, growing microgreens. 
Microgreens are ready to harvest when the second set of leaves appear, or sometimes you can even harvest them a little bit before the second set of leaves appear. These ones are just about ready to harvest. They could grow a little bit more. What I mean by the second set of leaves, these are the first set of leaves, and they'll start with a, a first set of what is called true leaves. These are called cotyledon leaves, and then they'll have a set of true leaves that come out. Um, and sometimes we don't wait until the true leaves come out. Sometimes we um, do them just right about the stage that they are at right there. Um, then you gently hold them with your fingers and just snip them like with scissors or a knife right above the coconut core. And they are excellent for eating. Of course, the best value is to harvest them right before you eat. You're growing them right there in your house. So you can just harvest them, put them on the salad, and eat them. Um, they're great to eat in salads, sandwiches, juicing, um, as a garnish. Uh, you can eat them in, you can put them in soup. Um, you can be really creative with microgreens in all of the ways that you can eat them. Hey, tell you what, um, I know that we've got lots of questions, and just based off of the time, I want to jump in and be able to show you the autopilot tray system. And then if anyone has more questions, um, we will be at our booth during the booth time. And so you can come up and ask us questions there as well. So let's talk about our autopilot tray system. Um, this is when when we were growing microgreens, uh, it was it quickly became I quickly became aware that the most um, laborsome part was just keeping them watered every day. And so I started thinking I had been toying around with making self-watering planters. And I was thinking, man, there's got to be a way to like put these on autopilot somehow. And um, as I thought through that process, um, the, it dawned on me this idea of setting them up in a way that they watered themselves through their whole growing system. So here is what we did. Um, let me... The first thing, the first system that I made, um, I actually took two trays, and um, I'll tell you the honest truth is the first one I had, all I had was trays that had holes in them, so I lined one with a plastic bag to be my reservoir. But you can get trays that don't have holes, and you would use that as your reservoir. So this would be tray number one. The first way that I made them was I took a second tray, and I, I cut it off um, part way down, and then basically, and then cut slits in the corners, and set it down into the other tray so it made a little stand. Um, since then, I have modified that design. Y yeah, this is good. Do you mind holding the microphone, hon? Sure. Since then, I modified that design, and um, I decided to create little platforms. And you can see in the picture here the little white um, little edge sticking out next to the microgreens there. You can get this like card, it's like a plastic cardboard um, that's kind of stiff. And so I'd make little platforms out of the plastic cardboard and then just use uh, little PVC pipe um, segments to create a little stand. And then I put the platform, I don't have any of those plastic platforms, so I just cut a tray and this would, this would work too. But then you just put the tray down on those, um, on that stand, and you can see how it makes a little stand that stands up higher. And you want it to be about half an inch from the top of the tray, because that's where you're going to put your coconut core. And remember what Natasha was saying, when you use our autopilot tray system, it brings your whole growing operation to the top. So that will help with disease pressure as well. You're not, they're not sunk down inside the tray. So then what you do is um, you fill the bottom reservoir with water. And if you're using a liquid fertilizer, you can put the um, fertilizer down there. Um, otherwise, you just fill it with water. And then you take what we d did, and this is the way that I started, is I took a polyester cloth, and um, I actually started out with using just like an old exercise shirt <laughs> just because I wa wanted to do it. Um, and I just had to find something that was around. Uh, the very first time I did it, I did it with a cotton t-shirt, and the thing just disintegrated by the first time that I had grown in it. So um, I switched to using a polyester cloth, which will last a little bit longer, and you 
lay it over your platform and the edges will hang down on the sides down into the water. They're not, they'll hang on the inside. I'm just showing you on the outside, but they'll hang on the inside down into the water in the tray below. And what happens is it naturally wicks the water up to your coconut core. And um, it will do that for the whole, you know, we fill, we fill the reservoir up with water and it lasts for the whole 10 to 14 days that your microgreens grow. So you can come back and harvest them um, afterwards. And can I say something to you? Yes. We just bought this fabric at Walmart in the fabric section. Yeah. It was just for $1 a yard. And I'll tell you, a yard of fabric goes for a lot of trays. So it is super cheap, and you can reuse this. So um, no real cost concern there. Additionally, um, like during the spring and early summer, our reservoir did last the whole time. During the middle of the summer, July and August, when it was really hot outside, the microgreens still grew very well, um, but the reservoir drained, of course, much more quickly. So I would have to refill it near the end or at least add some near the end of the time. So just yeah. remember that evaporation is going to be taking place at different rates depending on the heat yeah. outside. Or if you're growing indoors, it probably wouldn't be an issue. Something that I want to try that I haven't tried yet would be using a paper towel as the as the wicking system. Um, you'd want to get like just a very natural, unbleached, you know, paper towel that doesn't have any chemicals in it, if possible, and um, put it over. Like I said, I haven't tried that yet, so I can't tell you if it will work. But it is something um, that I want to try because it'd be easily compostable, super in it, inexpensive, and you won't have to when you do use the cloth. Like the roots do go down into the cloth, and you kind of have to scrape the roots off, and then you probably want to wash the cloth again before growing the next time so that it will stay clean because we talked about the disease pressure and all before. Um, but it can, it works. It works well. Um, but I wanted to try, you know, we're still perfecting the method, so I'm just telling you my ideas so you can try it too, and um, we can be in touch. So the coconut core is right on top of the polyester Yes, Correct. so you put the polyester down or, or whatever wicking system you're going to use. Yeah, and then the coconut core is on top of that. And you want to make sure to wet that cloth down ahead of time. So you wet it down, you put your wet coconut core down, then you seed it. And during the germination process, you still want to cover it and keep it moist and make sure they get a good start. And then once they're sprouted and you uncover them, then you can pretty much just leave them and you don't have to worry about them until harvest time. Yeah. And here, let me just show you a couple. Um, yep. So this is uh, one of our, our members, Larie. Uh, from our gardening membership and she went through a little microgreens training online and set hers up with the automatic tray system. So she or she was seeding them with the kids. She said, I'm so excited. Um, I don't have the grow lights. So she grew these in a window and we'll see what happened here. She grew a whole bunch of different ones. She has like amaranth and some brassicas in there and stuff too. So that was, um, that was five days in. They're looking good. They're on the autopilot tray system. And this was about 10 days in. Her microgreens were just doing amazing. And she harvested them and had so much fun with her kids um, growing them. So, uh, you know, we're big proponents of the autopilot system. But you can do it without it, um, too. You can do it with just watering it like the other ways as well. So um, to finish off here, I tell you what, like I said, I know I, I saw more hands going up. If you have more questions, we will be at our booth, um, which is when you go in the doors here, it is pretty much the first booth that you come to straight in front of the doors. And we do have the microgreens kits um, available. And like I said, they, they come with everything ready to get started. Um, you can, there's two trays and, and you, can trans, you can transform it into an autopilot system using those two trays if you want to. There's one tray with holes, one tray without holes, so if you want you can do the reservoir. Um, it comes with a couple packets of seed, a little bonus fertilizer bottle, and the coconut core. So it's pretty much ready to go. Um, they're $20 for a kit and how many would be interested in a kit? All right, yeah, so it's going to have to be first come, first serve, because we only have a limited supply, but I think we'll be able to get everyone that was here. So just make sure to come to our booth um, as soon as the booths open, and we'll get you set up. 
with growing your own microgreens. And if you have any more questions, you can come there and ask us, or you can connect with Lucia Tiffany if you see her around as well. She is um, excellent to ask questions as well. And go grow those microgreens. You're going to really, really enjoy it. Um, and so thanks so much for joining our class here, and can't wait to see you later.